guys after subscribing to this channel please make sure that you also press the bell icon so that no notification no new video of mine any educational video is missed by anybody all right guys we are starting the oski practice the oski exam questions tonight and the first question is here just take a look at this slide there is something shown i can go back if you want to okay this is something which is shown over here please read the question Your time starts now. I can show the the image once more. Okay, guys, time is up, and. Uh, I have some real star students here. I'm really, really impressed by by the answers given, and I think the best answers given by Kamyani. She was also the first to answer. Very well done, Kamyani. I'm very, very impressed. Uh, Swapna, Meghna, uh, Salma, Vivian, you people have also tried very well, and I'm very, very impressed. Everybody who is trying and self-assessing themselves is a very important time to do that, and it's very, uh, you know, you'll not get this opportunity very, you know, soon. So please utilize this time that you're getting to practice your OSCE. Yes, you're right. Most of you are right. This is internal iliac artery, as you can see. <clears throat> I have this. Uh, I'm sorry for the picture, girl, guys. You know, this is a. Uh, these pictures have been taken in a very strict environment by somebody. Uh, you know, during the exam, so it's going, going to be. Comp uh, you know, the quality is going to be compromised. The previous OSCE was still better than this, but here the quality is a little compromised. My apologies for that, but I can't really help it. Even I had a tough time making the answers. In fact, you know, I had to give some of my fellow students these uh, this work, and many of the uh, you know answers are made by them. Uh, so there are certain things which are uh, absolutely correct over here, like the identify this and yeah, yeah. One more very important thing: the OSCE slides. Some of them have not been uh, you know um, done very well, so they are very very ambiguous. So instead of giving you a wrong answer, I'd like to skip them and give you the ones which are you know. For sure, correct point on correct. Like for example, this one. This is internal iliac artery. You know the branches. They are the uterine artery, vaginal artery, middle rectal artery, superior vesical artery, inferior vesical artery, superior rectal artery, so much, so on and so forth. Right. So these are some of the visceral branches we have written down. And whatever comes into your mind, you can write down. I have taken a complete lecture on the different branches. Remember, anterior division, posterior division. Correct. And I told you how to how to remember them. First is the bladder. Then there is uterus. Then there is rectum. Correct. The superior inferior vesical. Okay, and then uterine artery, vaginal artery, and then you come back to superior rectal, inferior rectal, all these things. Uh, you have to superior rectal, sorry, middle rectal, not inferior rectal. So remember that these are the branches, and there are of course many other branches, circumflex so, so artery and stuff. But you whatever comes into your mind, because they've not asked you in which specific branches, anterior division, posterior division, whatever comes into your mind, you can write down. Okay. Then the last question was. Uh, two precautions while like getting the structure. So some of you have written take uh, right angles. Everybody is right. The most important is to uh, avoid injury to ureter. Ureter is a very close, you know, lies in with. Uh, I should not be using that word. Very close proximity to the internal iliac artery, and so, uh, many a times you end up like getting the ureter, and you also sometimes end up right like getting the uh, external iliac instead of internal iliac. And then if you do that, you have gangrene and everything of your lower limb because it's applying the external area that is the lower limb basically the uh, external uh, um area yes so ensure uh over here i've written down avoid the see external iliac damage to the external iliac and the aorta and uh save the ureter very important okay ready for your next question everyone Everybody ready or do you want me to stop for some time? Guys, if I keep stopping, you know, you'll it'll be an unending class. So I'm sorry, but your OSCE gives you that much time. And so am I going to give you? Yeah, this is your next station. Please start.
Okay, guys, time is up. Everybody who's writing, you can stop. You can assess for yourself whether you were able to finish in four minutes or not. Everyone, all right? Everybody in the class, please make sure that you know that how much you finished in four minutes and you have to finish a little before that, okay? Remember that if they are giving you four minutes, remember that you have to finish it in three and a half minutes, okay? That will give you sufficient time to get ready for the next station, to revise, to add points and stuff. And many of you are not writing down answer uh, as per the question. One, two, three. And two ka sub points, three ka sub points, whatever. Okay. Please don't just put a dash and keep writing down. I know it saves time, but that's not should that should not be your practice. Because examiner is not going to search answer. Because I don't know when you're giving the answer whether it is a sub point of one question or is you've already started a second question. So please label it, guys. Label it. It's a prerequisite. Okay. I am not going to search, neither is your examiner going to search whether this is the two points of the first question or the second point has already started or the second question has already started. Please don't do that. Okay. So now let's let's uh, discuss this question. Very evident, 29-year-old primary, 38 weeks, two days, uh, known case of hypothyroidism, treatment uh, on treatment is in labor, has come for emergency cesarean delivery. After the spinal anesthesia, you see that there is a blood, there's a blood pressure drop. So what steps should be taken to manage the patient? Mostly everybody has written correct. You have to give an immediate positioning, a left lateral tilt. Okay, mostly it's such a collapse. You, you want to just shift the uterus away. So it's better if you can give a left lateral tilt. That's one. IV fluid bolus, everybody has written that down. If required, vasopressors. Okay, since so a two-mark question, which is why I have added these points. Oxygen therapy. See, uh, you have, everybody has written one or two points, but look at the, notify the anesthetist, reassess the circulatory status. Reduce the anesthetic for high. How are you going to do that? You will not want elevate the head. You want to elevate the head, not head low. Okay. Do not do this because in that case, spinal anesthesia is going to go more kefalad. So you will not go for head low over here, guys, everyone, right? And continuous fetal monitoring, oxygen therapy if required. Okay, so these are the ways to manage the patient. With a drop in the BP, you need the most important, which in which I'll not uh, you know pass you will be left lateral tilt or at least a you know wedge. Crystalloid, crystalloid fluids and look for vasopressors if required. Immediately call for help and then as it is already, you know, there, obviously you don't have to specifically notify them. Monitor the well, fetal well-being, maternal well-being and oxygen help. Okay, check for the vitals. The next question was, uh, what is the cause of postdural puncture headache and how will you prevent this? There are two questions in this and how many marks is that? Let me ask you. Uh, okay, what is the cause of postural puncture headache? I think this should be two marks and this should be one mark. Maybe it is not written correctly, but it's okay. Let's see. What um, or what is the cause of postural puncture headache? Mostly because of the leakage. How many of you have written that? Leakage basically, okay. Not just the puncture, but the leakage. Leakage of the CSF through the puncture site. Okay, and that leakage causes decrease intracranial pressure, and because of that, there is traction in the uh, you know meninges, and then they are very pain sensitive structures because of which there is a very bad headache. Uh, most of my patients have this. So how will you prevent that? You go for a very small gauge spinal needle number one. You can also point, uh, you know opt for pencil point needles. Okay, you have to ensure proper patient hydration. Most of you have written this down. So hydration and choosing a small size of the spinal needle is going to do most of the trick. Avoid multiple punctures. There are many anesthetists which give multiple punctures. So it's leaking already from one place. And then there are some anesthetists which let it leak for some time. Not going to work. Not going to work. It's really going to cause a lot of irritation to the patient, right? Next question is still which sensory dermatome? That's, uh, most of you have written down T4, which is right. Because you would want to give it for complete coverage of the peritoneal manipulation as well. Okay. So it's mostly T4. Okay. Now. <clears throat> Are you ready for the next question, guys? We are done with two stations. Now we're down the third station. Okay, I have a plan of doing 15 stations, but let's see how many can we cover tonight. Uh, please, guys, I, I request everyone again. Let me see who all are there in my class. So Shiva, Rakim, Ashwini, I want everyone to answer. Priya, Aishwarya, don't sit around, guys. This is a golden opportunity for all of you to answer. My next station is coming up. I want everyone to Time themselves in four minutes. They'll finish in three and a half minutes and they're going to send me the answers. Okay. If you want to type, type it, but please label the answers. Okay. One answer is this. Two answer is this. Three answer is this. It doesn't matter. Suppose you wrote and somebody else uh, answer came. It doesn't matter. Idea is that you get a practice of the speed. Okay. Next question coming up. Okay.
Okay, guys, time is up. Everyone, please pens down. I want everyone to have a practice because you'll not get more time. You'll be immediately shifted to the next session. And for that, you have to do this practice. So everyone who's there in the class, I request everyone to take it very seriously. Okay, so let's start discussing this. It's very obvious. They've now given you the diagnosis. What more do you want? So at least one job is done. At least you're not going to answer all the questions wrong because you diagnosed it wrong. The question is that it's definitely it's appendicitis. Now they've asked you. They've asked you the most appropriate subsequent investigation. They actually asked a very confusing question. The question should have been either the next next investigation or the most appropriate investigation. But they've said most appropriate subsequent investigation. Actually, that should have been ultrasound. Most appropriate actually is C. The most appropriate imaging technique after an inconclusive ultrasound, after an inconclusive ultrasound is MRI. Okay, so you cannot forego ultrasound. Most appropriate is MRI and most and the next most next subsequent investigation will be ultrasound. You cannot jump on MRI without do, doing an ultrasound. So definitely the best modality is MRI, but the subsequent, that means what will you do first will be ultrasound only. Okay. So when you're writing this answer, such a question comes in your exam. If you're smart enough, what you'll do is the first investigation of choice will be ultrasound and the best investigation will be MRI. Okay. So I understand that it's a very manipulative answer, but at least you will not end up losing marks. Okay, you know the answer. You know it that much. You know it that well, but you will, you will write down whether MRI or ultrasound. If that's the question, just write down ultrasound, next investigation, MRI, best investigation. You getting me, guys? Okay, it will not take much time. Ultrasound, next, MRI, best. Okay, next question. What is the incidence of acute appendicitis? Uh, 0.1 to 0.2%. Some of you have written down 1 in 2,500. I'll, I can give it to you, okay? It's the most common non-obstetrical surgical emergency. It is not a very high percentage, okay? It is somewhere around maximum, maximum, you can say it's still 1%. So you can write on less than 1% or many of you have written down, I don't know from where you've got this figure, 1 in 2,500. I don't know, but yes, it's very, very less, 0.1 to 0.2. Even if you write on less than 1%, you'll get the marks, okay? Next, what is the recommended intra-abdominal pressure? Many of you have written on 15 to 20. Never, ever will you see 15 to 20 in a pregnant uh, uterus, um, this, this kind of pressure. So please do not mention 10 to 12 is sufficient enough. If some of you have written on 12, that is also okay. 13 also I'll accept, but not 15 to 20 any day. It's not above 15. The usual uh, pressure when you're doing the uh, laparoscopic surgery is only 14. Okay, so if you're going beyond that in pregnancy, you never do that. You're always less than that, right? Then what are the ultrasound findings of appendicitis in pregnancy? So you have a diameter, the diameter increases. You have periappendiceal fluid connection. Many of you have written that. It's absolutely right. Even if you write this down, that's good enough. You have e increased ecogenicity of surrounding fat, which in indicates inflammation. It's a non-compressible tubular structure in the right lower quadrant. So it's a tubular structure, which is non-compressible. You can compress it with the probe and you'll find you'll have tenderness. You'll have rebound tenderness. The probe tenderness will also be there. These are all ultrasound features. So I asked one, but I've given you four, whatever you remember in the exam. And remember that you're doing an ultrasound and there's a big dilated tubular tubular inflamed angry structure over there so it's non-compressible tubular structure diameter is usually more than six millimeter you'll see periapendiceal fluid collection and even the fat surrounding the uh, you know this uh, appendix is going to be having increased ecogenicity which is indicative of inflammation you can type the answer guys you can also write it down and click a picture whatever is more fast for you but i want you to answer fast practice practice everyone